Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're going to be taking Samplitude Pro 7, this guy right here, from the very beginning, and I'll do the update later. There's a, there's an update. How great is that? And we're going to go from nothing to MIDI, getting MIDI working and being able to write in, write in parts with virtual instruments. So first thing we're going to need, we're going to need a project. I'm going to go for just a brand new multi-track project. And four tracks is fine. Sure, why not? We'll just stick with the default. Hit OK. OK, so when it loads up and some scenarios, like when I booted it up for the first time, this wasn't here. So if you go down, it may look like they may just be slightly too small. So yeah, if you open it up, you can actually load plugins in right here and they'll load up their plugin picker for you to use. Alternatively, um, if you don't want to use it this way, you can click on the track you'd like to load a sound on and it will select it over here in the track editor. And over here you have a slot for plugins. So we'll go ahead, we'll pick some plugins here. I'm gonna go with a Magix synth and let's go for Vita. Sure, why not? We'll double click it, open it up and now we have a VST. So pretty simple, right? Got our VST. If you close it, you might be going, how do I get it to show back up? Well, you could click on it here and nothing happens. And this was one of the things that sort of threw me for a bit. But if you right click it, it will pop up. So you need to right click it in order to get it to show up. You can also click it here. Or if you click right click on the track and go to VSTI instrument editor, it will also pop up. But yeah, left clicking just kind of selects it. <laughs> so just be aware that that's how that works. Now you might want some MIDI here, and if you double click or right click, you get the context menu, um, but this is kind of like just a lot to look at. So the way you add a MIDI clip, besides just recording something in, is to go up to the object area and going down to new MIDI object. So we click new MIDI object, let's say we want it for two bars, and now we have a resizable, if I can go over here, MIDI object that we can make however many bars we want. Maybe we want it to snap to the grid, so we'll click that. And it will now snap so that we can easily select a number of measures. And you're able to write MIDI in. Another way to do this, uh, if you don't want to be bothered with this, I think this is a harder way to do it, but you could try it. Record arm it and just hit record. And then, well, hit record. You gonna, there we go. And then just play something, boom, you have a MIDI clip. Uh, but of course, I'm not gonna do it this way. Do you want to re, yeah, let's go, let's delete it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna instead do it this way because you get a nice blank empty one, which is nice. So a new MIDI object, and we'll go for two bars. So once you have your MIDI there, uh, let's talk a couple keyboard shortcuts that are useful. So first, if you double click it, it should bring you to the MIDI editor. If you're on one of these other pages, just have it selected and go to your MIDI editor and it should pop up. There's a billion cool options in here. Personally, I think the sheet music views are like really cool because that is becoming a more rare of a feature. Uh, but if you left click, you can place notes down, hold it down to place longer notes. If you want to change the snap setting, it's up here. It's given in actual notation values and a number, which I think is fantastic. So yeah, you've got 16, you've got quarter notes. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on eighth, that's fine. Uh, to zoom in and out. So you can grab these bars here on the side to zoom in and out. But this is kind of like, you know, moving your mouse all the way over there is a bit much. So if you hold control and shift at the same time and then scroll your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out on the X direction and if you just hold control, you zoom the Y direction. So I'm going to zoom a little bit out in the Y direction and hold control scroll to zoom out so that we could see two bars. Now that their convention here is if it has colons, it's a beat number. If there's no colon, it's a measure number. So this is where measure two starts. So this is beat two, beat three, beat four of measure one. So let's, let's put down a couple notes. Now you might notice that this note isn't as big as the key. That's because I have velocity on. So if I turn that off for a moment. So if either of these are clicked, just sort of unclick them so it looks the same. And let's go ahead. We'll put down a C, a D. I'll drag it out. A G. 
and an E, you know, just a little arpeggio. Now, some things you may want to do immediately. Maybe you made a mistake you want to delete. You can go ahead and right click. You'll get the eraser tool and you can just go over it to delete it. If you want to edit a group of notes, traditionally, at least how I've always done macro things like this is control click drag, but that is not how this works. And instead it is shift right click drag. So it's, it's a bit different than you may be used to. Um, and then instead of duplicating, often it's shift click drag, but uh, here it is control click drag to duplicate if you want to duplicate the selection that you made. So they're a bit different. It may take a little getting used to. And uh, if you're like me, you'll get angry once or twice at it because <laughs> you're like, ah, it, it deleted them instead of cloned them or, you know, it did something that you didn't want it to do. But anyways, yeah, pretty simple stuff. Once you get the hang of it, it's very intuitive. So we got it now. We can push play and hear it. But you may notice uh, the velocities, right? These are all like really loud and these this one's very soft. Um, so if we go ahead and turn on the velocity view, um, you'll see that this is at a different velocity. Yeah, the height of it will appear at a different velocity based on, you know, this. But you have to have velocity on. That's not that's not the greatest explanation, but that's how it works. So you turn this on and off to view the velocity, and it'll actually show up as a different colored note. Like, notice this is like a lighter color than the others. So anyways, yeah, we could click this. If I go ahead, shift, right click, drag to select these notes, we can make them nice and soft. And maybe we want a bass note down here, maybe a G, and maybe we want the G a little louder. We can do that, drag it out. So on and so forth. Now, if you want it to loop, uh, very easy. If you come down here, there's a loop option. So you click loop, and then you need to set your, your loop up here. So we go ahead and set that up. So now it'll loop through. We just want the first, the first uh, measure since that's all we wrote. And oftentimes I want to zoom out a little bit farther so I can start looking at what comes next. Uh, but it will only zoom out as far as this clip up here, as far as it exists. So you need to make the clip longer if you want to be able to zoom out further here. Uh, just a hot tip for you in case you're like, why can't I zoom out further? Your clip may just be a little too short. But that is, you know, at this point, you have what you need to add VSTs, write some MIDI, get some sounds going. And now you can add another, uh, you know, MIDI object, get another VST loaded on, you know, track two. And away you go. Now you notice here, too, all of these are very small. So that plugin area disappeared. But again, you can drag down if you want to get to it here. But oftentimes, it'll probably be more practical to just click on it and add it in the track editor area. And then you can go ahead and, and do it there. If you have any questions about this, feel free to drop a comment, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for future videos. And have a blessed day.